Memphis is like, bring it to me. I am the queen. Bring me the greeny beanie. Yeah. <gasps> Guess what we doing today? You figured it out. Memphis is like, whoa, wait. I think I figured it out too. If I back up, you guys have probably figured it out as well. We are making bone broth. I did this a long time ago. I haven't done it in quite a while. And uh, I thought, you know what? With everything going on with Memphis, why have I not been doing this? I mean, I buy it at the store every once in a while, but I'm like, I know how to do this. I've done this before. So I thought since I'm making a nice big bowl of bone broth for the dogs, that I would show you guys how I'm doing it. This is a little different than the last time I did it, but I have all of my ingredients here. We're gonna go ahead and get to it. So as with all of the recipes that we do, if there's something in here that your dogs don't like or something in here that you don't wanna put in it, that is perfectly fine. Basically, when you make bone broth, the two main ingredients are the bones of your choice and the apple cider vinegar. Everything else is just additional. So if your dogs don't like green peppers or if your dogs don't do well with green peppers, you don't have to put them in. You can pretty much modify this any way you would like. Memphis is like, where is my table? I'm sorry, but your dad is not here. He's doing a roof, so I didn't want to put you girls on the table without having anybody to help me out. <laughs> so real quick, like, I'm going to go over some of the things that we're putting in this. I am using only beef bones because that is what I had. You can use chicken bones. You can use whatever types of bones you have. You can even use already cooked or roasted bones as long as they didn't have any type of seasoning that your dogs can't have. But these, I just went to the butcher and they cut them for me. So we're gonna go ahead and put those into the pot. And how many bones? Anywhere between two and four pounds. I have about three and a half pounds of bones that I'm using. And this is a six quart slow cooker. Put them right in there. Oh my goodness. I know, I know, trust me, I know. It smells amazing. So next we're gonna go ahead and add some seasonings. The seasonings I'm going to add this time around, we're gonna do a tablespoon of oregano. I'm going to do two tablespoons of fresh parsley. And then I have some fresh basil. I'm That's actually basil, those leaves are gigantic. So I am gonna go ahead and put two of those giant fresh basil leaves in there. Again, there are a lot of different seasonings you can use. This is what I'm choosing to use. You can also use turmeric, turmeric, however you say it, but it's actually best if you add that at the end, which I didn't learn that until after I made bone broth the last time. So like I said, about one tablespoon of oregano. How do we measure? Well, you know, we just shake it until we think it's enough. That look good? That looks good. About two tablespoons of fresh parsley. Again, how are we gonna measure? How are we gonna measure this, girls? We're just gonna put some in there. About that much. That about two tablespoons? Sure it is. Yeah, it's not an exact science. Now, because I have these great big fresh basil leaves, does that smell amazing? I'm just gonna put them right in there. I'm not even gonna tear them up. I'm just gonna put them right in as one big leaf. Do you wanna, would you like a nibble? Would you like a, she's like, mm, no, I don't wanna nibble at that. Thank you very much. Three big leaves of basil right into the slow cooker. And now for the vegetables. Dogs, you could please stay up here. I know it's hard without the table. It's hard for me too. Sorry, Dan, have fun editing this one. And now for the vegetables. So this again is just another way to get lots of really good healthy things into your bone broth. And of course you can feed your dogs the vegetables afterwards. Kira's like, give me all the vegetables. For the vegetables, we are doing a little bit of green pepper, some fresh green beans, some carrots, and some celery. You wanna try some? Okay, let's try some. All right, you wanna try a celery? Memphis gets a celery first. See what she thinks. Memphis is not a big fan of raw celery. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna eat that. Oh, she gonna play with it. You gonna play with this? It's still on the floor. So Memphis has decided to leave the celery. The other dogs are so excited I have some in my hand, they haven't realized it yet. Seniority, ma'am, Kira is next. Sit. Celery. Kira doesn't know how she feels about celery either. She's gonna play with it as well. How about you? Will you eat the celery? Of course you will. Because you'll literally eat anything. <laughs> so we've got some celery we're gonna add right in here. Next we're gonna add some carrots. I know you don't like celery. Do you like carrots? Memphis is like, oh, I do love carrots. They're very, they're very yummy. You want a carrot? Crunchy. Okay, how about you? Gee, how did I know? You do love carrots. <laughs> and we're gonna add some chopped up carrots. As for how much, 
I don't know, that's like a cup or so, and like maybe a half a cup of celery. Oh, I missed it. Memphis went back for the celery that she was playing with and she actually ate it. Did you eat that? She's thinking about it. Next, I'm gonna add some farm fresh green beans that I just cut up into little pieces. Um, ma'am, do you like farm fresh green beans? I know you love canned green beans, but how about farm fresh? Try that. A little different. She ate it. Yeah, she ate it. Okay, here. Greeny beanie. She ate it. How about you? Greeny beanie. Okay. Green beans into the slow cooker. And the last of the vegetables that we're gonna be adding, green pepper. And this is probably, well, it's one whole bell pepper. So we're gonna add one whole bell pepper. Minus some nibbles because I know you like green pepper. Green pepper is one of the only things Memphis will chew when she eats it instead of just swallowing it. And I know you like green pepper. Crunchy, crunchy. How about you? Green pepper? Mmm, mmm. Good stuff. Green pepper into the pot. The next thing we're gonna need, and no, I'm not letting the dogs try this, even though they seem to think they want to try this. You're not trying this. <laughs> is about a quarter of a cup of raw apple cider vinegar. And yes, it does matter that it is raw apple cider vinegar. Pour it right in. Now you're gonna notice, well, we need water. How much water? Just enough to cover everything. So like I said, water until it's covered. About that much. So I am doing this in a slow cooker and I am going to leave this in here for about 24 hours. 12 to 24 hours on low usually works out pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and do 24 hours. Now, if you do not have a slow cooker, you can simmer this in a big pot on the stove. Again, probably about 12 hours of simmering. You can also do this in an instant pot. The instant pot is the fastest way, but I've tried it a few times that way and wasn't really happy with how it turned out. The slow cooker method for me has always worked. So that's what we're gonna do. So now, yeah, movie magic, you guys will get to see it and it won't feel like it took 24 hours, but for now we're gonna turn this thing on low and let it go for 24 hours. This is also a wonderful time to remind you guys, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to click that bell and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of all of our new videos that we put up. And if you would like to see more of our treat videos that we have done, there will be links to some playlists down in the video description below and at the end of this video. We have made a lot of dog treats over the years and I don't know if any of you have actually watched every single one. I would love to know how many of you have seen every single dog treat video we've ever made let us know down in the comments so movie magic it'll be done in a flash oh it's nice and simmering we're at about 20 hours so it's just about done and it's done so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit before I strain it like not to room temperature but at least a little bit and then we're going to strain it Woohoo! so now that I have let this cool just a little bit I am going to strain this. First, I'm gonna take all these bones out and then I'm gonna strain it because I want just the juice. And yes, you can feed like the green beans and stuff that are in here. You can go ahead and still feed those to your dog. So any of the vegetables, you can still feed them, but I'm looking for just the broth. Okay, so everything has been strained twice. First, I put it through a big colander and you know, got all that stuff out. Then I put it through a little metal strainer and got a little bit more stuff out. You can see some of the fatty chunks in there, but look at all this good stuff. Let's see. Do you get to be first? You're like, oh my gosh. Was that greeny beanie better than the greeny beanie you had the other day? She's like, that was pretty good. Kira says, um, hello. I am no longer scared of the stove. Please give me a greeny beanie. There you go. Oh yeah. And like I said, you really can take most of the stuff out here. Like I don't like giving the dogs the fat chunks, but I'll take some of these green beans out and feed them to the dogs. What do you think Memphis? Get out of Memphis's face. Memphis is like, bring it to me. I am the queen. Bring me the greeny beanie. Yeah. So let me show you how much bone broth we got today. So this is the container I ended up putting it in. Oh, we got a pretty good amount. Now this is still not finished. You can see where it's separated at the top and the bottom. I am going to let this completely cool and then I'm gonna skim the fat off the top of this. And then we'll be left with all of this beautiful goodness 
for the dogs. Pretty exciting. And like I said, I'll probably go through this and take out a lot of the carrots and green beans and stuff and use that as a food topper as well. I just don't want all these fatty pieces because most of you know this, but if you put too much fatty stuff like that in a dog's diet, it can give them pancreatitis. It can give them upset stomach. So we're going to take the fatty pieces out, get all the vegetable parts out, put them in another container and then use them as food toppers for a couple of days because they're great for that. So now we just got to wait until this is done. And apparently Mr. Cicada friend wanted to be on camera today as well because I forgot I had the window open so you guys could probably hear the cicada outside. Hear him? He's saying hello. Could you smell it? Do you know? Oh, Memphis is coming too. Can you smell it? Do you know? Yeah, do you know? So, left the bone broth in the fridge overnight. You can see the fat has separated from the rest of it. Now I'm gonna take this fat off and show you what the bone broth looks like. Now you can see here it has a beautiful color to it. Yes, a couple pieces of fat are in it. That's perfectly fine. I use this as a food topper and my dogs get fed twice a day currently and I put about two ounces on each meal. It's gonna be different for every single dog but I use this as an additive for their food but we're gonna go ahead and give them a little bit to try. And Miss Memphis Bell, since you're the best kitchen helper ever, you want the bone broth first? There you go, my dear. So there's about two tablespoons in there. I think I said two ounces. I do two tablespoons on their meal every time they eat, but they didn't get any this morning. So she can have her two tablespoons now and then we'll let the other dogs try it as well. Is it good? This is like, oh my goodness, you guys, bone broth is the best stuff on the planet. Yeah, I know it is. She's like, I gotta get all of this. I gotta lick the whole thing clean and then can I have some more, please? Kira's like, no way. I get soups in the morning? You sure do. Here you go, ma'am. She's like, yes. So for those of you wondering about storing this, you can freeze it into little ice cubes and then put that on their food. You can also make gelatin bones out of it. You can add some gelatin to it and make them little gummy bone broth treats, but I like to use it as a food topper. So you've had it before. Memphis has had it before. Let's see what Eleanor thinks. So Eleanor has never had bone broth that I've made before. She's only ever had the kind that I bought in the store, but I think she's gonna enjoy it. Let's see. She's like, oh my gosh, put it down so I can, so I can eat it. Yeah? She's like, whoa, this is the best stuff on the planet. Like I said, it makes a great food topper and the amount I made will probably last me about two weeks or so, maybe a little bit more. And then we'll make it again. Was it good? She's like, oh my gosh, that was delicious. Can I, do you have some on your hand? Maybe you have some on your hand. I would totally get that off. Thanks, honey. So I think it was a win. All of the dogs really enjoyed it. Again, you guys, if you would like to see more of our treat videos or even more of the stuff we've done with bone broth before, there will be some links at the end of this video and down in the video description below. If you end up making this for your dogs, let us know how yours turned out. Oh my goodness. Some people call bone broth the miracle elixir. Eh, maybe it'll bring Memphis's liver levels down. If not, at least they're all going to enjoy it. Say fresh food added to your dog's food is always a plus. All right, you guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay positive, dream big, and we will see you again soon. Goodbye.